Your home and the equity in it is not a prudent investment. In this episode, we are going to address the question that I've been asked numerous times in my career as a financial strategist. Is a home a good investment? So my name's Doug Andrew. I've educated people for 45 years on how to optimize their assets, minimize taxes, and empower what I call their authentic wealth. One of the biggest insights people had when they purchased my very first book titled Missed Fortune was the 11 chapters at the beginning because there was a total of 23 chapters, but 11 of them were dedicated to real estate and in particular, your home. Is that a good investment? Well, I measure investments based upon uh, three, maybe four criteria. This is what uh, features or what deems a prudent investment. Liquidity, safety, rate of return in this order, and then if there's any tax benefits. Now, sometimes people think that a home is a good investment. Now, based upon that definition, a prudent investment must pass the, what I call the laser test. Okay? It, it's LSRR, uh, liquidity, safety, rate of return. And then we can add the T if there's tax benefits, that's like icing on the cake. I learned the hard way that your home equity is not a prudent investment because it fails all of those tests, liquidity, safety, and rate of return, you do get some tax benefits. And so I'm gonna explain why and how I learned that lesson. So the second chapter of my very first book, titled Missed Fortune, I disclose a defining moment in my life that some critics said, oh, you're a financial advisor and you admitted in your book that you lost a home in foreclosure? What kind of an advisor are you? <laughs> I go, what? That's one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me. I'm gonna share with you how losing that home in foreclosure in the moment, I lost 150,000 bucks. But I have made millions since that time because of what I learned by going through that bad experience. So when I share that, you know, I, I say, honey, look, look at all the blessings. Look at all the, the people we've helped to avoid the same mistake we made. And look, they compensated us. The world loves usefulness and they compensated us for our wisdom. I've sold over a million books with that story in there. Many people send me thank you notes from all over the world for helping them not get into the same uh, trap that I was in by trying to pay off my house or letting too much equity accumulate in my house. I say, look at all the wonderful uh, emails. Look at all these notes. Look at all the money that we've been reimbursed. Let's go lose 20 more houses. <laughs> my wife goes, no, once was enough, honey, once was enough. So if you haven't heard this, I'll just summarize it. Clear back in 1978, my wife and I built our third home and it was a beautiful 6,400 square foot home. And we built it for 150,000 bucks. And when we moved in, it was worth 300,000. We didn't put any money in a down payment out of our pocket. How we did that is explained in my book. In fact, I've never paid a down payment out of my pocket for any piece of real estate or any home I've acquired. I've satisfied down payments, but not with my own money because I learned uh, some very valuable lessons. The, the mistake I made wasn't paying a huge down payment into this house. The house went up in value from 150,000 that I put into it to build it. And it was worth 305,000 when we moved in. Now that wasn't money I put in there. That was the value of the house. And so I thought I had the world by the tail. I had a $300,000 house and I only owed 150,000 on it. Most people say, Hey, wow, you did actually, you've got a hundred percent rate of return. No. I learned that that 150,000 of home equity meant absolutely nothing but a number on a sheet of paper, a balance sheet, if you get into trouble. Because we had three things happen to us about two and a half years later, we never dreamed would happen simultaneously and we found ourselves without an income. So we couldn't make our mortgage payments. We went without an income for nine months. I had to liquidate other assets. I had to sell a duplex, but it wasn't a good time to sell. So I didn't get the money out of my duplex that I really wanted, but it was enough to bring my delinquent mortgage current. I sold a timeshare at a ski resort 
fortunately for triple what we had paid for it, but I used up my assets trying to save this house from going into foreclosure. In retrospect, I probably wouldn't have done that because we finally decided we've got to sell this house. We can build another one. I owned another two acres right next door adjacent. Well, we listed that house for 295,000. Why? because we had a bona fide appraisal for 305, but no takers. See, when uh, you have a recession, and this was the recession of 1980, 81, 82, where a lot of people throughout America, especially in Houston, Texas, lost their homes in foreclosure during that uh, oil crisis. Well, it rippled throughout America and it affected us. So when there's more supply of homes for sale than there is demand, people who want to buy them, values have to drop. And we had to lower the price on our real estate listing from 295,000 down to 285, 275, 265, 225, 195,000. We couldn't give it away. And I'll never forget the day we walked into the county courthouse and we watched that beautiful house get uh, auctioned off in foreclosure proceedings. Now we went out uh, within 48 hours and bought another home with no money down and no credit. I've done that many times, uh, but the point I'm making right now is I learned some things. I learned that that 150,000 of equity in my house was just a number on a sheet of paper. It meant nothing unless I could access it. The only way I could access it was to sell it, which I couldn't do. I had to keep lowering the price, so that went away. So I, I realized that it was not liquid. I couldn't get to it. I couldn't borrow because I didn't have an income to qualify to borrow. I learned that it's a lot better to have access to your home equity and not need it than to need it and not be able to get it. It's a lot better to have and not need than need and not have. And then I learned that um, home equity does not have safety of principle. Uh, that 150,000, my house was worth 300 and then it went down, 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 down. I couldn't even give it away for 195,000. So it did not pass the safety of principle test. In other words, I could lose my original value that I once hit. So the strike one, strike two, liquidity, safety, it's not a prudent investment. What about rate of return? Real estate equity, especially my home equity, it always has the same rate of return. Zero, zip, nada. In other words, your home is gonna do whatever, uh, go up in value or down in value, regardless of whether it's mortgage to the hilt or free and clear it has nothing to do with how much equity you have in the property. Does that make sense? So let's say that I have a hundred dollar bill and I um, put it in a, in a jar or a tin can and I bury it in my backyard. Now, is that hundred dollar bill buried in my tin can in the backyard liquid? Yeah, as long as I can remember where I buried it or my wife doesn't find out. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Is it safe? Well, yeah. Again, as long as uh, somebody doesn't find out where I buried it and they steal it. So the hundred dollar bill in the tin can in my backyard, it's safe as long as somebody else doesn't find out, but is it earning a rate of return? No. In fact, it's probably doing what? Going down in value because of just inflation. So what's the difference between a hundred dollars in a tin can buried in my backyard and the hundreds and thousands of dollars that we tie up in the bricks, mortar, wood foundation of our houses, I would submit that the $100 bill in the tin can in the backyard is more liquid and safe than the money we tie up in our homes. But as far as rate of return, you can understand that money buried in a tin can is not earning a rate of return. Either is that real estate equity. The only way that home equity earns a rate of return is when you keep it separated. You separate it. So by keeping the money separated, the reason why I don't pay uh, any money out of my pocket for a down payment, I satisfy it using OPM, other people's money. I keep that money over here in my right hand pocket, so to speak, earning uh, compound interest tax free in what I call my laser fund, and I've averaged 9%. So 9% tax free. The mortgage, if I borrowed money at 4.5%, and that's not, my mortgage right now is only 3.375, 3 and 3 eighths. But at 4.5% tax deductible interest in a 33% bracket, it's only costing me a net of three. How much more is 9% you're earning in this pocket versus the 3% in simple interest tax deductible declining balance in this pocket? It's three times as much. This is how you can become your own banker. And I actually will have enough money over here to pay off a 30 year mortgage in about 12 years. If you do that with a 15 year mortgage, you're sending it to the uh, mortgage company. It's like saying here, Mr. Banker, 
Here's an extra hundred bucks this month. Put this against my mortgage. Don't pay me any interest on that. If I borrow it back, if I need it, I'll borrow it back on, on your terms and prove there's a need why I should have that. It sounds sort of stupid, doesn't it? So that's why I don't give them my money. I keep them separated because home equity fails the liquidity, safety, and rate of return test. So this is why I keep my real estate equity in a position of liquidity, safety, earning predictable rates of return, compounding tax-free at usually 100, 200, 300% greater, okay, three times the net cost of the tax deductible mortgage interest that I'm paying. And this is what makes the world go around. This is what banks do. They borrow our money and pay us 1% and they turn around and increase the safety by five notches and earn 5%. They're making 500%. Every 10,000 they pay in interest on a million bucks in their bank, they make 50,000. That's five times. So these strategies have been in all my books. My first one, Missed Fortune. But my most recent book, you can understand why I keep all my serious cash, my real estate equity in what I call the laser fund. So if you uh, click down here, you can get a free copy of this book and uh, you just pay a nominal shipping and handling fee of $5.95. It's actually two books in one. This is 200 pages, 14 chapters, all kinds of charts and graphs, uh, the explanations. Uh, this book is about 100 pages and it's 12 chapters with 62 actual stories and there's a chapter in there on uh, real estate and how to manage it better. If you wanna read both, you can use your right brain and left brain and I would love for you to get a free copy of that. So click down here and learn more.